Good morning, friends. Uh, today, we are here to discuss about one of the prominent topics in psychology, which is learning. Most of us think that when it comes to learning, we need to be clever and we need to be constantly active and pay attention to what we are listening to or what we are learning. But in usual circumstances, that's exactly what not learning means. Every animal or any organism in the world learns every second. And we are constantly in relationship with each other where one organism and another learns with each other and from each other. Learning can be defined as any relatively permanent change that occurs in a behavior of an organism or a potential behavior which is due to the circumstances and the experience that it goes through. And many prominent psychologists have already discovered different bases and forms of learning, among which we'll be learning a conditioning, which is basically called as classical and operant conditioning. One of the former psychologists who started working in the field of operant conditioning was Edward Thorndike. And later, this particular form of conditioning was, you know, it became famous by another psychologist named as B.F. Skinner, who has uh, you know, uh, contributed immense work in the field of learning and psychology. <laughs> For those of you who already know what classical conditioning is, uh, this is a bit different than what you have already studied. So when it comes to apparent conditioning, the person has a choice to change his behavior accordingly. Whereas in classical conditioning, it's inevitable and regardless of how you want to change your behavior, the person does not have a choice to alter his or her behavior. Let's go deep. Uh, operant conditioning can be defined as any type of learning in which the organism learns through the consequences of its own behavior. Skinner, as I said earlier, developed one of these very famous experiments where he created a niche and a you know a box in which he gave a you know a condition for a particular organism say rat where he placed a lever a bowl and a cylinder he put some grains in the cylinder pellets of grains in the cylinder what he did was he let the rat stay in this box for a very long time <coughs> Obviously, when the rat is inside a box, it keeps roaming around, it, 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 it's restless and it wants to walk around all the time and it gets hungry after a while. So what the rat discovers is, it accidentally presses the lever and sees that there's a pellet which, which is introduced and advances inside this uh, particular bowl when it pushes the lever. The rat keeps on doing the same thing over and over again and finally learns that pulling the lever gets the food. Isn't that just amazing how the rat, how a mere animal or a, you know, a very short life like that of a rat learned something so advanced and so critical in such a, so a short span of time. We human beings also develop instrumental learning in many such scenarios. And let's just break it down. <clears throat> there are a few uh, you know, outbreaks where uh, humans tend to learn through reinforcements and punishments. Reinforcements are nothing but those stimuli or those events that let you learn, you know, that strengthen your particular behavior through learning. And there is another form which is a punishment which weakens your behavior because, uh, because of a particular stimulus which makes you not want to do certain behavior, not want to express certain behavior. Reinforcements and punishments can be both positive and negative. Positive reinforcements, we are very well versed with this particular uh, reinforcement. We come across this in our daily lives. The salary that you're paid for your work is a positive reinforcement. If you score well in your exams, there is a high possibility that your mother can get you something, uh, uh, you know, gift you something or get you uh, a video game or something when you uh, score well in your exams. So that's addition of a pleasant stimuli that gives you pleasure, that gives you happiness. Similarly, there is negative reinforcement. Negative reinforcement happens when a particular behavior is required 
and a particular stimulus, an unpleasant stimulus is removed. If you're not studying properly, your father keeps nagging at you. And if you want your father to keep, stop nagging at you, you study properly. So a desired behavior is achieved by removing an unpleasant stimulus. Similarly, punishment, as I said, this is uh, used for weakening a particular behavior. And uh, positive, reinforce, uh, positive punishment is something where an addition of unpleasant stimulus happens. If, you, if someone wants to stop a particular behavior of yours, say there is a, a lamp which is kept inside your room and there's a small child which walks in. And if you want the child to stop you know, touching that lamp, so if you want the child to stop from touching that particular lamp, you let it touch because you know that it's hot. And if, if, you, if, if this kid does not want to stop, it's human tendency to, uh, you know, where the children want to do something when, when you ask them not to do, right? So uh, that's a human tendency uh, and, and children obviously don't listen to you. So if you want them to stop doing something, you let them do that. So when the kid goes and touches that particular lamp, it knows that it's hot and it won't try to touch the lamp again. So that's addition of an unpleasant stimulus. Similarly, negative punishment is when removal of a pleasant stimulus happens. So you're walking around in your room. What happens is you're being very lethargic and you're being very lazy and not even studying properly uh, you know, for a few days. Usually, in, in my house, if I do that, my mother would take away my phone and get me grounded and would stop me doing things that I would want to do. That is removal of something pleasant. Whatever you want to, uh, you, you like, whatever you, you want to do something, that is taken away from you. You're withdrawn from that. So that you learn or express, uh, you stop certain behavior. So if your mother wants, does not want you to be lethargic, she takes away your phone. That way you are made to learn and made to be in certain manner. And uh, that's a very beautiful thing if you uh, know, like you express yourself and you learn something new through a very instrumental kind of learning. So uh, uh, these are a few references that I've taken, which is uh, Introduction to Psychology by Robert Barron. And then uh, I also referred a, a short video on YouTube, uh, which is also use, uh, you know, useful in communicating operant learning. And uh, I think operant learning can be applied in many forms and in many areas, say in politics or in the way a person has to vote a particular person or uh, say in mere employee and manager relationships. If, if you want your employee to make them learn something, operant or instrumental learning can be applied in such places. That was me. Thank you.